Uh, hello everyone, uh, in this video I want to show you a new feature in Refire 1.60, it's called uh, Refire Trace, you can find it in Create Geometry Refire category, here it is, it's a uh, simple object. Uh, to create it, it works actually like a plane, so you just click and drag to opposite corner. So here it is, and as you can see it's just a plane right now. And now let's uh, see how what it can do. So the basic idea is that it can trace uh, some image, black and white image or any other, to interior and exterior elements. And uh, here's two choices, bitmap and texture map. Bitmap means that you can use any image inside some folder. And uh, you can use texture map uh, to load some uh, procedural map from material editor. First time I will use this bitmap. And uh, here is this bitmap uh, group. I can click on the none button. And now you can select some trace uh, map. I will use so here's my image I used originally. And I edited it in Photoshop and created this one. Just black and white. So I will uh, load it. Take a second. Take may take a second. So as you can see right now, it traced the elements. Uh, also, uh, first uh, when I created this trace object, I used just a random size. But now, since I already loaded some image, you can uh, fit the size of the trace the object to the size to proportions of your image. You can do this by clicking this two, uh, one of these two arrows. So as you can see right now it's square. So let's say you want to increase your width. And now to make the length is this, uh, the same scale, you can click on this arrow near. OK. Uh, so next step uh, is, uh, let's see, this group of uh, properties called uh, interior color. Uh, Okay, so interior color by default is black color, and uh, this is what it does: it just uh, trace all uh, white uh, white areas to exterior elements and all black areas to interior elements. If I will assign edit mesh right now, here's what I have. As you can see. All white areas is separate, and uh, all black area is just one big element right now. Okay, I will delete it. Also, uh, here's a value threshold. So let me increase this trace map. So if you'll see, you'll notice that uh, there is not only black and white pixels, but some pixels are gray and this uh, value threshold uh, defines will they be uh, involved uh, as uh, interior or as exterior so let's say I will increase some area here and uh, I will change threshold to 0 0.1 you'll see that my cracks will be tighter looks more tight but if you want to get more uh, more areas as as, as uh, interior, you can increase it. Let's say set 0 0.8, and your interior area will be wider. Also, though, it's possible to use hue and saturation from texture in case you use some image, but this uh, prop is uh, off by default. Okay. Next. Uh, Two rollouts is actually interior rollout and exterior rollout, and as you can see, both of them have this remove and optimize checkboxes. So you can remove your interior and get only white exterior elements, or you can remove your exterior and get only interior element. And uh, let's see, this uh, also common properties optimize. As you can see right now, uh, all interior, uh, all exterior elements are just one uh, big polygon. But if you will not 
optimize it you get this one second okay so uh, as you can see it has the same detailization as image you have so the more pixels have your image the more details you will get on the cylinders uh, later you can assign displace modifier and uh, put some volume to this pieces but uh, I will use optimize on okay uh, another there is a relaxed edges property and again if you will turn it off you will get all this uh, edges accordingly to pixels on your image and of course it's not appropriate in most of the cases for you so you can relax them and make them look more natural another very important uh, property is calling fracture you can fracture or in all interior areas only for, uh, only interior element can be fractured as you can see you cannot exter fracture exterior so what this, uh, fragment size defines it defines uh, amount of faces for each fractured piece so if I'll fracture right now here you can see that uh, all the all that big element is now fractured to smaller elements so if I will assign edit match for now I still have one big exterior element but all interior elements is fractured to these small pieces it actually looks pretty blocky at close-ups but uh, from the distance there looks pretty okay also it's uh, this blockiness is pretty uh, nice for uh, phys physical simulation okay and uh, second property is variation in percent it adds some variation you can make it let's say 100 and get small pieces and big pieces it's pretty easy <coughs> okay uh, I will turn off fracture right now to make it work faster so next uh, rollout is extension shell rollout it's pretty important rollout because right now all we have is just a simple plane you of course you will not be able to simulate plane fragments you don't need them so here's when you can uh, add some shell to your pieces all, uh, so all you have to do is check on, check on this exterior checkbox and start add some shell and as you can see since you have a checkbox on only for exterior you are adding shell to only to exterior elements and your interior element is still flat and plain so you can check on and uh, here you can see now it also has some shell uh, so there is a lock checkbox uh, so when it's locked it means that all uh, interior properties lock to exterior so if you change exterior you automatically change uh, interior shell as well but uh, in some cases it's uh, not appropriate to have the same shell for interior as exterior have so it's reasonable to unlock it and give some other shell so you can make it bigger or you can make it less since there will be a lot of small chunks it's reasonable to have <coughs> less shell for interior pieces also uh, there is a shell variation spinner uh, right now it's not not uh, noticeable here but if I will increase it I will have different shell from this side add, uh, add some random height for all the fragments per element looks pretty nice uh, also uh, this shell property it can be both negative and positive so you can move it up or down how you like it I'll set it to negative now okay so right now uh, as you can see one my side is looks much more interesting than another side and this is when you can start 
Also, you can add variation for your interior. Since right now it is just one big element, you will not see any difference. But if you will fracture two pieces, you will see that each fractured piece have different shell if your variation is, uh, if you have some value here. So, uh, next property is map size. It defines UV scale for uh, this sh uh, this face. So let me create some checker with some tiling. I will sign it, it here. So here's my mapping for front faces and back faces. But as you can see, my shelled faces uh, UV mapping is not okay. So you can start play with this map, map size while there and get some scale you are okay with. Okay, this one is, looks much better. Okay. Uh, yeah, we'll just assign this grayscale material again. The next group of properties is shell offset. After you added some shell, as you can see, one side is pretty random, looks pretty random, but other side is pretty flat. So here, uh, where you can start, move your uh, interior and exterior in directions. Not changing their shell, but actually moving each fragment. So there is a global spinner, so you can move all your uh, in exterior right now. I'm moving all my exterior pieces. Uh, and also there is a variation per element. So again, it makes everything looks more natural. So as you can see, you got pretty nice wall. Just a minute, and it looks pretty interesting. Okay, uh, and of course you can do the same with uh, interior, moving it back and forth. And again, if you have some fractures, let me fracture it. Wait a second. Okay, now as you can see, it's fractured, but it still looks flat. So we can start playing with uh, interior variation offset and get some random sh uh, random shift. Okay. Another property is uh, what I want to show you is uh, this extend sides uh, feature. So right now you have one trace object and uh, it uh, traces it from one corner to another. But let's say you want to uh, you want to have uh, to, to blow up some wall and you have trace map only for small part of the wall and you want to uh, explode only the small part. So in this case, you will, you will need a big white trace map and only small part of it will be cracked into pieces. So to avoid this, you can enable this extend sides and start increasing. And as you can see, you can get some additional flat sides uh, from right to the left. Maybe a little bit for top and bottom. So right now you have this only small part. Trace it to fragments. And you can explode only this small part. Also you may notice that right now there is uh, this straight lines. And uh, of course it's not okay. It's because right now, if, if you will not edit mesh, you'll see that this extend in the geometry is separated element. But if you want to make it look better, you can check on this attach to exterior radio button. And in this case, it will uh, attach all the uh, exterior white fragments which are on the sides to this extended element. So right now 
this one big uh, element. So basically, you can just blow blow up or uh, explode only this uh, fragments and use this big element as a kinematic or static object. Okay, I will disable it. Um, the next uh, rollout is output selection, and as you can see by default, there is a side for exterior and side for interior. <coughs> which means if you assign uh, edit mesh one, one more time you will see that all uh, shell shelled faces or inner faces are selected that might be useful in case you will simulate them later you can add some debris using a thinking particle so particle flow and use inner selected faces as emitters or for fume effects whatever any uh, other reason as you can see you can add this other faces to the selection so you can set only for top from for interior and exterior so only this front uh, faces will be selected or only to the bottom so another side will be selected or you can set let's say only all three checkboxes for interior so right like uh, right now all uh, interior pieces selected so uh, in case depends on how you will use them later, you can play with these checkboxes and get selected faces you want. Another group is advanced parameters. It's a random seed, pretty simple. It uh, changes seed for all variation properties. Optimized settings, I actually don't suggest you, don't advise you to change them. They are pretty hardcore. But I will talk about remove colonial words more. Uh, okay, let me fracture off for a moment so uh, here uh, as you can see uh, there is a pretty detailed edge here and it's pretty curvy but this line doesn't have any additional edges because it's a straight line and it uh, don't need to have such detailization on the straight uh, polygon so this is what uh, remove collinear words do if you will uncheck it, you will get all the detailization. But I suggest you to use it because it uh, removes a lot of unneeded faces, and especially it's not visible. This is not visible uh, with brick-like trace maps. And also there is auto update. So right now, uh, right now I'm using pretty average trace map size. It's about 400 pixels to 400 pixels. But in case you're using some real hardcore images. It will be pretty time. You will you will spend a lot of time changing each parameter and waiting when it will be changed. So you can out update it off and uh, change any parameters you want since you're familiar with them. You know how they works and then update it manually. Okay, uh, now I want to show you how to use procedural map. So I will change this uh, bitmap to texture map radio button and I'll go to material editor here there is a one nice procedural map it's called tiles here it is tiles so uh, I will select trace map and drag and drop so this texture map button. Okay, since my auto update is off, I don't see any difference. Okay, it's better. Okay, so uh, there's no difference because I have black color as a interior <coughs> color. So let me uh, edit some properties for this tile texture map. First of all, I will change its color to white and black okay so you already see that it was traced to pieces now I will change it to let's see something more interesting 
indeed like this. Uh, so as you can see, there's a since this procedural map doesn't have any p actual pixels, you can set custom detailization for them. This white and height <coughs> property I will set to 300 to 300, and now you can see each block separately. And uh, let me increase horizon count. Say 20. Maybe not 20, maybe 10. And here I will set 20. Okay, so here's my geometry. Okay, let me edit it a little bit. Let's see. I'll set here shell. Okay, so now it looks a little bit more interesting. Maybe add some more offset variation. Yeah. As you see, this object is completely procedural, so you can change here, let's say, some property, vertical gap, let's say, put it to 3. And uh, it will. Here we go. And now let's fracture your inner faces. I uh, mean your interior faces. Uh, let's see. Put here 40. Fracture. Okay. Okay, that's basically that's all. Now you can open Rayfire Floater, select the subject, go to Tools and Detach by Element selected. And here we go, your 686 objects. And you of course can simulate them. As you can see, they are they're, they're, they're exploded because there are still pretty big uh, interior pieces fractured. Uh, it's because I should uh, use lower fragment size. And you can you can try different setups and see which way is ok for you. Okay, I have a few things I got to mention here that uh, here's a pretty useful auto automatically checkbox so let's say you have some trace map uh, let's say I'll use this one so as you can see right now it's traced I uh, can add some shell and uh, right now if I will Start edited and Photoshop. So here's my trace trace map, and let's say I will draw some more cracks. Let's say I will continue this one. And then I click save. Here you see it automatically updates inside 3ds Max. Sometimes it might be pretty useful. So all we need to do is just drawing some strokes inside Photoshop. Click save and you get it updated inside 3ds Max. 
and in opposite way you can actually erase some credits click save and as you can see your map is updated here might be pretty useful in some cases again also if you are not okay with Photoshop uh, but you need some trace map you can go to your open refire flow to and go to about and you can see this trace map link uh, so it will open my website so you can find some trace images here also if you have uh, some good trace image you can send it to me and I will upload it here so other users will be able to use it that will be great uh, and now uh, just to sum up everything I just uh, said and showed you I will create I will show you the basic workflow uh, so first I created this refire trace object I want it to be a wall so I will rotate it next uh, step is to add bitmap I will use this trace map and now let's trace it next thing I will uh, fix my proportions and uh, now I will start adding shell I want to use custom shell for exterior and interior so here will be my bricks shell and uh, here will be my interior fragments shell it will be less about six times um, now I will add some offset for exterior and add some variation also so here's my wall okay uh, right now my interior element is just still one big element so I will turn on fracture set it to fragment size to 20 and then hit on fracture and now I can see it fractured already so basically that's all now uh, I can detach everything to fragments using verifier select this object, go to tools, detach by element selected so here's my fragments right now, 964 objects selected right now so right now it's uh, just editable poly object and you can simulate it so select this edge sides, add them in a static. I will freeze them. I will select others, add into dynamic list, and uh, maybe I will deactivate them and activate by force. Uh, some steps to zero, one. Okay, time scale, gravity everything will be less time range will be more collision tolerance will be higher now I will create some bump this is, by the way this is a new uh, helper for a bump object as you can see it already has some range and uh, position it set some strength chaos Add it in simulation properties and uh, set explosion frame to one and start simulation. Okay, my ground is off right now for some reason. Turn it on. Actually, I will add this bricks as uh, static as well. 
and I will move my bomb closer and increase strength. So let's close it right now. So here we go. Here's my simulation. And as you can see, that was it took just a few minutes to create such complex fragments according to image you already had. I think it's pretty pretty nice. Okay, thank you for watching. Hope you will like it.